G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Making a video devoted to comparing this current drought with the idea of a normal average year. If such a thing can be said to exist and here in the drought, this little stringy bark tree is flowering. Keeping the local bird community of honey eaters alive. So, in some places, where the forest is still functioning and the tree's roots aren't dipped into dry artesian streams. Some places things are not too bad. It would seem. But as I demonstrated in an earlier video titled Fire Protection Dreaming not all the country around me let alone all the country in northern New South Wales or New South Wales or Eastern Australia not all the country is functioning as well as that stuff is back there and I can show you brown dead leaves in the treetops and I can show you brown dead leaves on the floor of the forest where normally you would expect the whole forest would be functioning like that bit of it is back there. The shade from the trees keeps the forest floor cool so nothing actually really dries out and thanks to global warming's unusually warm overnight minimums currently running at a Oh, 8 to 12 degrees warmer than you would expect for this time of quote winter today being the last day of July so we've got one month of winter yet to go and already tomorrow the bushfire permit season starts pretty sure when I was a kid it started on the 1st of November and it's gradually progressively been advanced in two week and one month segments every time there's been a particularly bad year until now yeah the bushfire permit season commences one month before winter finishes so people have asked me how does 2018 this latest vicious intense drought how does it compare to an average year and that's really been difficult to answer because the range of what you can get in the month of January over say a 16 year period plucked out of the air because that's the uh, the time span over which I happen to be able to lay my hands on the figures for it's quite remarkable it, it very difficult without sitting down with a calculator and in this case 16 years worth of old calendars with figures duly noted to come up with what is actually an average rainfall for a particular month and then compare that to what has occurred you know what you get in the various months and then have a look at how 2018 compares to the calculated computed hypothetical average which you will virtually never see uh, so i did all that work yesterday that's probably technically a bit of a waste of a day to sit there on the veranda with a calculator and pens paper and ruler drawing tables of 
figures transposing them from old calendars onto one single sheet of paper. But that means I could then draw a couple of graphs. And that means I can now actually quantitatively speak with authority on how bad is Australia's 2018 drought. The one I'm calling the Barnaby Joyce drought, simply because it really sort of kicked in when we in New England re-elected Barnaby Joyce to be Australia's Deputy Prime Minister again, and Australia's Minister for Agroculture again, and Australia's Minister for sucking the water and the life out of the Murray-Darling Basin. So when we sent him back to Canberra to do that job, on the same terms that he'd been doing it before it was discovered he was secretly a dual citizen and therefore unfit to stand in Parliament, that's when our rain turned off. The Barnaby drought of the sort of intenseness and warmth and ferocity, the like of which we've never seen before. Because not only is the rainfall down, way down, but the temperatures are up, way up. Look at me, I'm in a t-shirt, walking around on the forest floor on the 31st of July in midwinter in the New England tablelands of northern New South Wales where when I was a boy we would get six inches to a foot of snow every year in maybe three or four little falls and once every ten years we'd get three foot of snow that lay on the ground and took a week to melt away and here I am midwinter in t-shirt barefoot walking where normally the rocks would be frozen and normally there wouldn't be any green growth of grass at all in response to the 2.5 millimetres of rain that we got on Sunday because it would be too cold for the grass to grow at this time of the year. So yeah this is the global warming drought brought to us by Barnaby Joyce. And of course, traditionally, when the rains don't show up and the crops fail and there's no harvest, then the peasants rise up and defenestrate the king for having led them into such devastation and despair. Well, that fate yet awaits Barnaby of the Joyce variety. But in the meantime, let's go and have a look and see just how bad is this drought. The Barnaby drought. The short, sharp, hot drought. The drought that's so bad that the highways around here in northern New South Wales are clogged and choked with bee doubles carrying giant round or cylindrical bales of hay from the north of Western Australia and they're heading south through northern New South Wales to go to Tamworth and places beyond down into Victoria because that's how far you have to carry a hay bale before you can feed your livestock, your breeding stock in the Barnaby Joyce 2018 drought. As I have said, in the beginning one has one's calendar which gives minimum temperature, maximum temperature and whatever rainfall occurs on a daily basis. So one can say 51.6 millimetres in July 2018. All these minima should be down around the zero. We've got 7, 8, 5, 7, 10, 12, 9. 0, 0, 3, 3, 4, minus 1, 0. 1, 2, 2, 0, 3, 6, 3. Haven't got a reading there, must have forgotten to write it down. Two, three, six, 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 two, ten, three, and one degree. Head high. Under the trees. In the forest. For accuracy. So, if we go backwards... through the calendars
Go back 11 years. Zero degrees, two, four, eight, four, two, minus a half. Two, one, two and a half, one, one, minus three, minus two and a half, minus two and a half, minus three, minus two and a half, minus one, minus four, minus a half, four. Two, two, four, five, five, six, four, minus a half, two, three. Divided by 30. Average minimum temperature of 3.883 and an average maximum of 14.566 in 2018. Whereas in July 2007, average minimum was 1.477 degrees with a high of plus 8, a low of minus 4, 10 degrees below zero. We find that July 2007, average minimum 1.47 degrees Celsius, average maximum 15.24 degrees Celsius, average temperature for the month 8.355 degrees Celsius. Okay, so your highest minimum was plus 8, your lowest minimum was minus 4, and there were 10 days below zero in the morning. 16 degrees, there were three days of them in the middle of the day, there were seven days above 15 degrees. There was one day where the maximum temperature was 5 degrees. Whereas July, 10 years down the track, average minimum 3.883 degrees, average maximum 14.566 degrees. Average actual temperature 9.2245 degrees. Minimum was made up of 10 degrees Celsius on two mornings, minus 3 on one, three days where it was zero or colder. Maximum temperature, 21 degrees on one day, three days above 20 degrees, 10 days above 15 degrees. Average temperature is 1.73 degrees higher than it used to be. 1.73 degrees as a percentage, 8.355 equals 20.7%. July 2018 is 20% hotter than was July 2007. This much is irrefutable. So when you look at 16 years worth of data with a three year hole in them, it looks like this. And it's kind of difficult to make any sense of it presented in such a format. Although comparing the average year to 2018 gives a little bit of a picture. This gives a pretty good indication of what's going on. In green, you've got the cumulative total of rainfall for an average year coming up to 830 or 835 millimetres, depending on how you allocate it. And then, in red on orange, you've got 2018 thus far which comes up to 185 millimetres, which is less than 50% of what you would expect in an average year. And speaking of an average year makes no sense at all unless you know what's the high point and what's the low point on a monthly basis over the last 16 years, because that's the figures that I had available. Um, so, okay, the blue lines, they show the highest and lowest recorded during that month the green line that shows the average rainfall and as you can see we generally have a bit of a drought before midwinter and a bit of a drought after midwinter and there's the 2018 line compared to the average line and of course before that we were doing pretty well But then we re-elected Barnaby Joyce and look what happened. 20% more temperature and missing out on over 50% of the rain. So there you go. And now you know that's exactly how bad the 2018 Barnaby Joyce drought really actually is. Barnaby has led us into a situation where it's 20% too hot and we've missed out on over half our rain. Shit oh dear, what a bugger.
Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.